hello everyone and welcome back to my channel thank you guys so much for joining me if you're not already make sure you go and hit the subscribe button stay in the loop and get notified each and every time that i post a video so you guys this video is just a q a video that i just decided to do because i have been getting a lot of questions um about my surgery my journey um my bbl process the lipo just different inquiries about my entire process from atlanta to miami from miami back to atlanta and just different things so I just decided that I'm going to make a Q&A video about my BBL journey and I hope you guys like the video. If you are interested in hearing what I have to say, then stay tuned and make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know exactly what you think and I will be sure to respond to each and every one of you guys' comments. So, we're going to get right into this video because I actually have a lot, a lot of inquiries from all of my social media. <sighs> it's so overwhelming and I know I've just been taking forever to like upload my videos and keeping you guys informed in the loop and letting you guys know exactly everything but it's a lot and I'm going to try to fill everything in in this video and not make it too long and hopefully I get all of the questions answered that I did get from my DMs and iMessages and my Snapchat. Stay tuned and we're going to jump right into the video. Okay so I'm back you guys and I am going to be using my iPad with the questions from all of my DMs just so y'all can see I'm just gonna go through and kind of skim through them and answer the questions and also I made like a little note cheat sheet of different questions from my other platforms um YouTube um Facebook Snapchat I'm still swollen, still swollen. Like, I literally live in my faha, I live in everything. The board, y'all hear that? The board, the phones, pads, the faha, like, camis. What else I have on? Uh, my waist trainer, everything. I live in all of this stuff, so. When I live in all of this stuff, my results literally <sighs> look better. When I take everything off, I'm literally flat, flat as a board. But when I'm outside, and then as soon as I like keep everything off for like, an hour two hours oh my god i look like this bloated i look this bloated with everything off but as soon as i take this off i'm literally like half this size like half this size it's so weird so i'm just going to start off with saying what is a bbl a bbl is a brazilian butt lift people it's a Brazilian butt lift. That is when you get the fat transfer from unwanted places to wanted places. Like, get the fat from your stomach, your back, upper back, lower back, love handles, these little fat little roll thingies right here, <laughs> your chin all of that any other all the places that you don't want fat most women do not want fat and you get it put inside your butt long like it's like a huge syringe where they make incisions if you looked at my previous video you can see my incisions i had nine lipo holes on my back period i'm talking about he probably was sweating trying to get all that fat out of his back he was like damn but listen it, it, it was worth it because baby whoo 
But anyway, he make the incisions, your doctor, female, whatever. They make the incision and they literally have this long syringe and they stick it all the way up in there and suck it out. Literally have like five or six big huge syringes that they fill with fat, lay it on the table, and inject it in your butt. In the holes where they put it in your butt. In the top, in the middle, in the bottom. I don't have implants. Like it's just a fat transfer. It's my own fat from my stomach, from my upper back, my lower back, all over, 360 life bulb, all over and put it into my butt. Half of the fat obviously didn't last because y'all seen, if you seen my previous video, like you guys really need to go check that out, all three of them. But um, my butt is not as big as it was right out of surgery. I lost a lot of fat. And I'm glad because I ain't want no big dumb ass booty like that. Like what the hell? I have little legs. How much was everything included so how much everything was included including everything my entire bbl journey is actually another video that i would have to do the math on literally write down think calculate you hope like go from amazon look at receipts it's a long process however my surgery my surgery alone just Paying for my surgery was $4,500. How did you pay for your surgery? Well, um, I caught them when they were having a special. And then the doctor that I chose, um, he was also having a special at the time to where you can put down $500 instead of putting down $1,000 to secure your appointment, your surgery date. So I did that and I just paid $500 right off top and secured my appointment and I got it that way. Um, where did you stay? I stayed in a recovery house. I chose to stay in a recovery house because I did not have anyone to go to Miami with me. I actually wanted someone to go to Miami with me. I prefer to have like a companion family member or someone to go on the trip with me to Miami and stay there with me because I was told by the surgery center that I needed to be in Miami for at least seven days after surgery for pre-op appointments and going to get massages and doing different things and no one can get that much time off so I ended up going to a recovery house because I needed to be in Miami for at least eight days and at the time I was not working because I knew my surgery was coming up so I wasn't working at the time. Why did you get a BBL? <laughs> That's kind of like a weird, not a weird question but like a no-brainer. So I decided to get a BBL because I'm just going to start off with the reason why I chose to get a BBL when I got the BBL. Well, during quarantine, the whole 2020 quarantine, coronavirus thing, being stuck in the house, I actually gained probably like 40 pounds. I gained like 45 pounds maybe. I had to add on that five. And I didn't like the way I looked. Like, I hate the way I look. I hated it. Like, I'm a person that loves the camera. I love to take pictures. I love to make videos. I love social media. I'm a person that's involved in social media. I'm trying to make a career and then, you know, evolve during using social media. And I want to look good, feel good, have the confidence and I just didn't like the way I look. So that is why I chose to get the surgery when I got it. Because I gained so much weight so fast. But I've always wanted my body done. Like, I've always wanted the figure. I've always wanted the shape. Even when I lost weight back in the day, I've been small. I've been down to 130 pounds. I'm like literally straight up and down. 
Like, I can't even believe, like, I got this dip right here, and then it goes out. Like, look at this booty. Like, goes out. Like, before, this would just go straight down like this, bruh. There would have been none of that. It would just go straight down. <laughs> and I'd be like 130 pounds. Like, it's nothing for me to lose weight. I can lose weight when my, like, if I want to lose weight, I'll lose weight. I just stop eating. I know what I got to do to lose it. That's not the problem. I just still don't have a shape, like. I'm really straight up and down, so I never really had the hips, which I still don't, and I'm highly considering getting a BBL number two. Yes, I am considering to get round two because I still don't have, like, the hips that I want. I mean, I have, like, a little bit, but, like, I don't want more booty. I just want, like, a little bit of more hips. But not too big because my thighs are not that big. That's the answer to the question. I've always wanted the surgery. And even when I'm really small, I'm straight up and down. I don't have any curves. I, I, I wasn't born to have curves like most girls are. So the next question, what was the most difficult part of your surgery? Um, I would say the car ride. So the day of surgery, after I woke up from anesthesia or whatever, um, getting in the car, getting in the car was the worst part because um, I was very, my butt was stinging so bad. My butt felt like a million bees was just on it, just stinging it. And then they were just so ready to get me out of there. Like, just kept, Tiffany, Tiffany. Most, most of the surgery centers in Miami, they're filled with Hispanics. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you, you, you and, and I, I'm still half gone from the anesthesia. I just woke up, you know what I'm saying? Like. What? And I'm feeling, oh, shit, I got a big ass. Like, that's how I was. <laughs> but then they're like, come on, you got to get up. You got to get up. Your ride is here. Your ride is here. Okay, so they rushing me to, you know, get up, put on my clothes, whatever. And just the fact of me having to lift up my leg to get in the back of the car was so hard. I was crying. I was like, <laughs> Like I was literally crying, I was boiling, it was hurting, my butt was stinging. And then it seemed like the, the recovery house was so far away from the surgery center. It was actually, it was like 35 minutes away from the surgery center. So I had to pee so bad, I had to pee bad as fuck. And I, I, I literally fell asleep and when I woke up I realized I was still in the car. And I was like, we almost there. She was like, yeah, we're just around the block. We're about two blocks away. I was like, I got to pee. She was like, it's okay, baby, pee. Just pee. It's okay. I was like, I don't want to pee all over the, you know, the back of the car. She was like, just pee. And I just, I just literally got on my knees and I just peed, bruh. I had on the faha that I woke up in and I just peed. I was just on my knees and I, the pee was all, just running all over, all over the place. That was the best pee in the world. When I tell you that was the best pee, that was the best pee I ever felt, bro. That first pee straight out of surgery. When I tell you I pee so much, it was so much pee. I was like, I was like, I'm sorry, it's a lie. I'm still peeing. And she was just laughing at me. She said, it's okay, it's okay, just pee, just pee. <sighs> Y'all, if it seems like I'm out of breath, it's because I'm so tight. I'm very, very tight. It's 7.32. I'm not gonna take this off until about, probably about 10.30 in the morning. Maybe if I stop talking so fast, I won't feel like I'm out of breath or whatever. But make sure you guys invest in you a pillow because you're gonna need that pillow on the ride. I'm telling you, that pillow, get you a long pillow, some type of fluffy pillow. Get the biggest pillow you can find. Get you a pillow, period. I cannot say that enough. I can't stress it enough. Get you a pillow, a big, fluffy, thick pillow. The pillow I had was cool or whatever.
whatever. I mean, it was comfy, comfort, you know, Tempur-Pedic and all of that, but it wasn't fluff enough. You know what I mean? You want to lay, you want to feel like you laying on a bear. I'm talking about out of surgery. You don't want to lay on a flat ass mattress. You don't want to lay on a hard ass back seat. You don't know what you're going to pick up in, especially if you go to a recovery house, even if you're going out of town to get your surgery or whatever, you don't know what they're going to pick you up in. You know, if you order an Uber, you don't know what your Uber driver is going to be driving. You have to be prepared for this. Get you a fluffy pillow to where when you lay on it, it's like you melt inside that pillow. Like I'm telling you, take it from me. I'm a big ass baby and I know these things. Don't get you no pillow because it's a Tempur-Pedic, all these high-ass brands. Get you, you can go to Walmart, get you one of them big, long, thick pillows that you get your kids or whatever. The that Get that for you. They'd be like $10 or $19.99. Get you something that's plush and thick for you to lay on and literally sink inside because I'm telling you, it's nothing more uncomfortable than laying on something that don't like mesh well with your body like mesh i'm telling you because it, it's annoying you're gonna be so uncomfortable it, it's just it's just it's a whole another lifestyle after you wake up from that bbl surgery you don't walk into a whole another world you're not the person you used to be i had to learn this the hard way i had nobody in my ear telling me nothing i didn't know nothing i literally did not know nothing it's like i moved to another country that don't speak english and I had to learn the, the the language that they speak. Figure out what the language was, then learn it. That's how it is getting surgery without no one telling you to do this, do that. Make sure you got this. Make sure you got that. Take it from me. I'm a realist. I speak the real. Get you a fluff, thick pillow. Even if you get you two of them, motherfucker. Get you two of them. Something that's just going to just melt in a bitch. <laughs> It's all about being comfortable. It's all about being comfortable. After your surgery, everything is about recovering and being comfortable. The last thing you want is to be aggravated, hot, and uncomfortable. Your stomach is going to be so sore. Your back is going to be so sore. The last thing you want is to not have that pillow and to be riding in the back of an Uber or riding in the back of a van, a truck. I don't give a fuck if you got a pickup. It does not matter how big the ride is. What matters is what you're laying on. If you ain't got nothing to lay on and he just bumping and, you know, and you hopping up, oh my God. Imagine hitting a pothole and you laying on the back seat and you bump up. Get you a pillow, sis. I'm not being extra. Even if you get you two, get you a pillow. Even if you don't travel with it to Miami or travel with it to Dominican Republic, wherever you're going for your surgery, travel with one. But when you get to your destination, before your surgery, before you get it done, if you stay in a recovery house or whatever hotel, make sure you got you two big pillows already on deck. Because laying on your stomach is like your new lifestyle. You're going to have to lay on your stomach 24-7 to do everything. To eat, to play on your phone, everything. If you ain't laying on your stomach, you have to be on your knees. Either or. Like you literally have to mentally prepare your mind emotionally. And spiritually, it's a whole nother world. You're not going to be able to do things you used to do the way you used to do them. So the worst part about, um, but I would say the worst part after surgery is trying to find your comfort. Like after you get through, they say the first three, four days is bad, but some people, it'd be, it'd be, it be like them sevens and eights and nines be real bad too because I know when I was in the airport, oh, but I was crying like a baby. I was crying like a baby. My flight got delayed two hours, bro. My flight got delayed two hours, and then this, and this this was this happened after everybody already boarded the plane and everything. Everybody had to get off. And I'm the only one with this big donkey ass booty trying to walk through and like, I was so aggravated, like, <laughs> I had nobody to curse out because ain't nobody do nothing to me. I just, 
Oh my God, I was so aggravated and annoyed. I'm gonna insert just a, a clip of me in the airport. I meant to bend, do a video of me in the airport from Miami. I don't know why I didn't do it. I think, and I just didn't like the way I looked, but I'm actually gonna insert a clip right here and show y'all how it was while I was in the airport. I had to lay on the floor and get comfortable because it is what it is. I had a big donkey booty. It was hurting. I was aggravated. I was uncomfortable. I, I was sad. I was hungry. I was by myself. And oh my God, it's just so much. But just check this out and we're going to get back to the Q&A. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. This airplane ride ain't no joke, bro. My ass hurt so bad. flight got delayed bro oh god I want my Vaseline my lips dry <laughs> my flight got delayed two hours y'all oh god <laughs> but luckily I brought me a lot of pillows so I got my BBL pillow holding up my phone. Got my boppy pillow right here. Got my pillow right here that I'm laying on. I'm gonna have to take me some pills. Y'all gonna need y'all a water bottle, I'm telling you the travel you need your water bottle you need your bottle keep you something drink i made it back on the flight back on the plane rather and it was only delayed for about 50 minutes luckily a couple of people switched around their flight so i ended up getting a whole row to myself so i'm stretched out stretch that on my stomach I mean it, it'll do for an hour and 26 minutes I guess till I get to Atlanta but I'm just grateful that I was able to get this road to myself God is good he worked it out
you, it's gonna be how you know if you're not the person that drains a lot it's gonna be so much blood your pad needs to be changed it is so much it's literally a major procedure and you need someone with a good stomach someone with patience and someone that's literally you know what I'm saying fit for the job if, if they don't have 24 7 around the clock caregiving skills I recommend a recovery house but if you trust this person to take care of you and be there by your side and support you and literally especially if you get in a BBL like me I got a BBL my y'all saw my video if you haven't already like I said go check it out but my ass was huge I could not even wipe the shit <laughs> it was so big going out like I couldn't even get my arm like around to like <sighs> I literally open my legs and squat and get up in there and literally like wipe from the from the front and go back like five or six times, bro, because it is a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot. Um, and then you said, did you? No, I did not take anyone with me like I mentioned earlier. I went solo dolo. And what was it like being put to sleep? Were you scared? Um, <laughs> it was very... It was very scary getting put to sleep. It didn't get scary, scary until I actually walked from the um the, the room that I was in to to like the um actual operating room. My nerves were shot. Oh my god, my nerves were shot the anesthesia i'm gonna just tell you right now the anesthesia hurts um i just remember walking into the room the the room was bright like you know how operating room looked it, it just looked so scary all the tools were laying there the nurses standing there all decked out the doctor here there it, it was just oh my god it, it got real i was like oh my god I was just talking to myself, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I didn't want them to see how nervous I was because if they see you nervous like that, they literally will cancel your surgery right there. I'm talking about you be standing right there before you even lay there. Uh, let's just try another day. They, they will cancel your surgery just like that, bro, with no hesitation. So so when I laid down on the table, um, he told me that the anesthesia was going to sting a little bit. I said, okay. I'm such a big baby, y'all. I'm literally a big baby. I'm a cry baby. So I felt when he was pushing the medicine inside my IV. Oh my God. I felt like this hot, hot shooting fire going up my arm. And I was like, whoa. I said it just like that. He was like, yeah, I know. It, it kind of hurts a little bit, but just relax. It, it's only, it's only going to last a few seconds. I was like, ooh, that hurt. I literally remember saying that. That was the last thing I remember saying. That was the last thing I remember saying, ooh, it hurts. And I was out. Laying on the bed, stretched out because my arms were like this and my, my legs were straight down. And I was looking straight up and I just remember saying the prayer. I was looking right at the light and I just prayed. I just prayed to God and I just asked him to cover me, protect me, cover me in his blood. I trust him. And I just pray that I wake up. Also, when you wake up from the anesthesia, you're going to be very, 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 very cold. When I say you're going to be very, very cold, it's not a game. You're going to be cold as fuck. You're going to be shaking. You're going to be like, your teeth are going to be chattering. It's going to be like you're standing inside of a deep freezer with a bathing, a bathing suit on. That's how cold you're going to be. That's the best way I can put it. So, wear a... Thick, thick robe. I suggest getting a thick robe, plush robe, because whatever you have in your surgery bag, that is what they're going to put on top of you. Of course, on your faha first. And whatever clothing you bring with you, your gown, your robe, 
that is what they're going to put on you so i recommend please bring you a thick robe it's going to be so cold as soon as you wake up you, you're going to be the cold it's like it's going to hit you instantly like so yeah <laughs> the anesthesia worked well for me um you're just going to be cold as fuck, real cold. You can also take your blanket, they'll throw it on top of you once you get in your ride or whatever. Your driver get you comfortable before they pull off, throw your blanket on top of you. You got your gown on, your robe. You're going to be good to go, girl. Next question. Did you like your results? Well, yes. When I woke up, I... I'm going to say I liked my results. I didn't love them because I felt like my butt was just like too too big like i was like what the fuck shit is big as hell like too big like but it actually fit like no it was it was too big because i looked like an ant from the back like the cheeks were just huge the cheeks it looked like my cheeks were about to explode but i liked them because i couldn't believe i had a big donk but at the same time, it was just too huge. But I knew I was extremely swollen, extremely swollen. Once I hit my fourth month, I'm going to start like really working out or whatever. And just cleaning up my eating habits and just trying to like just stay fit and maintaining my results. Because it is literally as simple as this to go back to the way you were before you had surgery. If it's easy as one, two, three, it's not that hard. So you just have to make sure that you um, do your research to, you know, maintain and find out what your BMI is and just stay on top of that. Like eat healthy, drink a lot of pineapple juice, drink a lot of water, get a raise and all of that. So you can maintain like the weight that you want to be and keep the fat off because a BBL is not a permanent like procedure you can literally like get fat again it's just like oh they just suck the fat out you can get fat again it's not that hard to get fat again like people get fat you know what i'm saying you gotta like eat right you can't just think oh i had surgery oh i'm a bad bitch i done had surgery it's cut out yeah it's a temporary fix you have to maintain the weight and keep the weight off you can't think that you can just eat whatever you want to eat and then you just so miraculous that you just can never get fat again because you had liposuction. Uh -uh. How many cc's did you get? I actually do not know. <laughs> I don't know how many cc's my doctor used. Um, I never asked. He never told me. I actually never even talked to my doctor maybe like twice since I left Miami because I had a couple concerns once I got back um, about my body because like I said in my previous video, I thought the way I was when I woke up was it. I didn't know I had to like compress, wear all this tight stuff and I, I, I just didn't know. I, I, I was just done to the whole surgery thing. Like I didn't know. So I hit him up a few things, you know, a few times doing texts or whatever, asking this, and he gave me some corners, told me do this, do that. But I actually was going to call Jolie Plastic Surgery is where I went and see if they could tell me, but I just never got around to it because I really don't, I don't really care. Like, I don't care. But to answer your question, no, I, I don't, I don't know how many CCs that I had. What was the most important things to pack? I'm going to say the most important things to pack for your recovery, straight out of recovery, I mean straight out of surgery, for your immediate recovery, like the first couple weeks, like the first week, two weeks, go to Walmart. Go to Walmart and get you like a, a handy brush. Um, <clears throat> I had this in my supply video. This brush, oh my God, I still use this brush to this day. It's wet right now. Like, this is, I, I no longer wash with a washcloth. I've never washed with brushes or sponges or anything like that. I've always washed with a washcloth. But this is, like, everything to me. It's very accessible. You're going to be very, very sore because if you go to a recovery house, they're only going to help you, most recovery houses, they're only going to help you, like, shower, like, maybe the first two days. After that, you're on your own. So you need something with like some stretch, with some reach. Like this, 
easy to wash on your arms because you're not going to have a wash they're going to have a washcloth but you're not going to want to use a washcloth because a washcloth is going to be too rough for your sensitive silly putty ass skin <laughs> it's literally like clay though you don't you cannot rub a cloth over you can't you literally gonna have to put soap and just like this is how i am every day i lather up my hands with soap and i kind of massage myself while i shower but this is my face like most of the time doing the shower and then i pick this up to get into places where you know on my arms my cooter my butt. <laughs> I use my soapy hand get the booty get this wash the back wash that way because I know I have nine holes in my back nine incisions from where I got lipo so I'll be needing these to wash like the holes or whatever so this was definitely handy for me and my urinal gotta have a urinal like gotta have your i don't know if y'all saw other videos and girls talk about the urinal some women like the urinal some don't i personally love the urinal i absolutely love it to this day i still use it. i use the urinal every single day i keep it in my bag it goes everywhere with me this is the part that grabs the cooter <laughs> you know you cup it up the cooter and just goes up kind of like just you know cooter put that thing right there boy and you do oh you let her rip boy and i'm telling you i'm a peer i pee all day all day bro like i got a weak bladder so i just be like <sighs> and of course make sure make sure make sure you guys have your pillows i'm not going to stress that enough make sure you have you at least two I, I i'm extra so i'm gonna say i say two but make sure you have you some fluffy thick pillows to lay on something straight out of surgery you're not gonna you're not gonna want to lay straight on the back seat with no pillow like that's that's just retarded it's just retarded and dumb like you just had liposuction. Your stomach is literally like clay -Doh. It's like, your stomach is like this. Like it molds and your skin is like this. It's so sore. You have to have a pillow. Like if you can't buy nothing else, buy you a pillow. That's how important it is. You're going to be on your stomach literally 98% of the recovery. 98% of the time. You have to have your pillow. I promise you. Um, How was the bruising? So... For me, the bruising was very, very harsh. Like, for one, I'm extremely light. Y'all see, like, I'm very, very bright, light bright. So my bruising straight out of surgery, my bruising straight out of surgery with this color. I have bruises right here, right here. Oh my God, under each boob. Oh my God, right here. If you look at my previous video, you can see the one right here on this, um, this life will hold, but my my bruises straight out of surgery for like literally for about two weeks, maybe three weeks, maybe like three weeks straight. My bruises were black and blue, a little bit of purple. Like I was very, very, very bruised up. Like he did some aggressive, aggressive lipo on me, baby. Period. I was I was really scared about that. Just make sure you don't fall in love with your surgery body. The way you wake up, when you wake up and you look at yourself finally like the next day or on day three and you love your body, you can't believe you got a big old booty, you got a small waist. That is not the final result. You do not get your final results until maybe the fourth or the fifth month. You're still swollen. I'm not even on my third month and I'm still swollen. Once I take all this off and I leave all this off for at least an hour and a half, my stomach gonna get bloated like I just ate or just drunk like a six pack of beer. I swell up like instantly. You swell literally up to about four months. I'm still swollen. So don't fall in love with your surgery body like I did because I thought that was it. I was just ready for my booty to go down, but I was in love with my flat stomach. My stomach was so flat. 
it was like so flat, flatter than, it was like half of this. Like, I could not believe it. I was shocked. I was shocked. <sighs> um, how are your scars? Right now, my scars are really good. I just posted a video, um, probably about a week ago, and, um, my scars are healing very, very well. I use, let me show you. I still use Arnicare cream. This is probably like, this is probably like maybe my fifth or sixth tube. Like I OD on this stuff. You can get this out of Walgreens, CVS, um, a vitamin shop, a GNC store, Kroger's Publix, places like that. Um, I massage with it as well. I massage with this Aquaphor Healing Ointment. I love, love this. This is advanced therapy. It's like a little ointment for, use it for babies. Just to like help like irritated skin. And it's really good. I use that. As well as the bio oil. And the moisturizing baby oil. Cocoa butter formula. So I also use this Benadryl cream that helps with the itch. I put that on my incisions really like lathers up my skin i do it every single day i don't miss a beat even on days that i do go and get a lymphatic massage i still massage myself when i shower um while i'm in the shower i massage myself like with the soap whatever i just massage I, i'm anytime i any chance i get i massage or whatever and i use this massage roller and I actually got this from um I got this from Walmart and it was I think like $16.99. It's just like a massage roll. The little things turn as you go with a massager for yourself and you just kind of it helps to like loosen up the lumps and the build up tissue and to do my back and go like this. like this to get like the size because sometimes out of nowhere I won't have love handles and then sometimes I will have love handles so I do this and I do it for the other side I ordered this one on Amazon I think it was like $10 10 dollars 10 or $9.99 the little things roll as well and it finally came, but it came while I was in Miami, so I actually have two. But it's the same way, so I use both of them. Massage down. Massage down. Like I had a big hard lump, a big hard lump. It, it's just like a your tissue is bunched up because the lymphatic that's in your body still, because once your incisions close, from them you know from your incision then you can't no longer drain that way because the, inc the incisions are closed so you have to you have the only way to get the lymphatic out is to pee so I started using this which is something that I ordered on Amazon I put like 18 to 20 drops of this in a bottle of water twice a day and it helps loosen up my muscles I be feeling like a bunch of little hard knots it's just like your muscles your tissue is bunched up and it gets hard from you not getting massages that's how you get hard and stiff so it loosens up the tissue and make it hard for you to massage Woo! and this is how I work out my arms too massage and get it down massage and get it down massage like that way so yeah i highly recommend this stuff it's really really good i'm telling you it helps my stomach go down so much it's called lymphatic drainage liquid herb lymphatic drainage it's on amazon I think I paid like maybe $27 for that. Um, the next question, how did you like your surgery center 
and how do I like my surgery center I guess so I mentioned before that I went to Jolie plastic surgery and I did a video on that as well make sure you guys go and check that out um, just go and check out all my previous BBL Lipo 360 videos. They're very informative. <laughs> but Jolie Plastic Surgery, I don't really have anything negative to say about Jolie besides the fact that I don't like their customer service. I don't really like the customer service. Like, y'all all the way in Miami and I live in Atlanta. So every time I call, why can't somebody just simply answer the phone? Why every time I call, it's like I'm calling a call center. You is not that prestige. You is not like the number one plastic surgery facility. Like, what the fuck? I feel like they was being extra with the customer service. Like, they literally never answer the phone. You got to go through a whole customer service process. You are now number 12. Please hold and wait to be answered. Every single time, they never just simply answer the phone. The customer service is trash. I hate the customer service. No one ever answered the phone. Um, my coordinator that I had, she never returned my emails. I had to keep calling, keep calling. Like, I'm a person that's on point. I, I was in the um, a lot of their surgery groups or whatever, so I kind of got a feel of how things go that way as far as you know staying on point with them do this do that um make sure i get this back on time make sure i pay this on time make sure i ask this make sure you don't do this because you don't want this to happen you don't want them to cancel this make sure this and that like i'm a person that be on point when i want something i jot down my notes and i stick to it and i get it done i like to do things myself because i feel like i get things done when i do it myself so you know, I, I just had a lot of questions or whatever. I had to ask them, like, okay, you know, after I pay my deposit, it, it probably like a month went by, I didn't hear nothing. I was like, am I supposed to be on some vitamins or something? Like, what's going on? He was like, oh, yeah, you could probably be, some somebody emailed me back, oh, yeah, you could probably be taking some hemoplates. That's real good. Most mostly, Most of the dogs, they'd be on hemoplates, so just... Just take that until your surgery day. That was literally how he answered me. My coordinator, she never responds to none of the messages that I wrote her on the portal. Nothing. Whenever you call the surgery center, no one just simply, thank you for calling Jolie Plastic Surgery. This is such and such. How may I help you? Or how may I direct your phone call? It's none of that. As soon as you call, dun, 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 Hi, thanks for calling Jolie Plastic Surgery. Blah, 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 blah. You are number 23. Like, it's literally like that every single time. So, the customer service is trash. But when I got in Miami, um, everything went smoothly. Um, it's like 12 steps you got to go through on your pre-op day. Everything went from step to step. Everything worked smoothly. Everything went good. So, I just don't like the customer service when you call them. That's the only thing I really can complain about. I love my doctor, Dr. Valadares. He was bomb. He hooked a girl up. Like, oh my God, I cannot wait to show y'all my before and after picture I promise <laughs> I promise bruh I promise Woo! like he did some aggressive life on me I ain't even gonna lie he did some aggressive life on your girl cuz no wonder I was black and blue and purple like Sometimes I just be looking in the mirror at myself and I'm like, damn, I, I really just can't believe that I actually got the surgery done. I, I, I literally cannot believe I got it done, but anyway, that's something else. How many massages did you have done in Miami? So, in Miami, I had a total of, what? So, three massages came with my surgery costs. Um, so I got those three done and then while I was at the recovery house, they offered them there, which was $75 a pop. And I got, I got three massages there while I was at the recovery house. So all together I had six massages done while I was in Miami. How was your appetite after surgery? My appetite after surgery was bomb, baby. 
Listen, as soon as I got back to the recovery house from surgery, I was like, I'm hungry. I'm always hungry. <laughs> I was like, I'm hungry. I want something to eat. She was like, okay. And oh my God, the recovery house, they had this soup. It's like this, I don't know, the recovery house, the owners, they're Jamaicans. And so their traditional soup that they fix for their dogs that's straight out of surgery, I had two bowls of it. I was like, can I have some more? And oh my God, she sat there and she just fed it to me to the whole i mean she was scraping the bottom and she just fed it to me she's literally sat there with me for like probably like 40 minutes and fed me two bowls of soup it was bomb my appetite was perfect nothing changed i was hungry as hell um did you throw up at all no i did not throw up at all before after none of that doing surgery i didn't throw up i did get a little lightheaded though like my first two days out of surgery, I got very, very lightheaded. But every, every time I got up to, like, go pee, she would help me walk to, you know, use the bathroom or whatever it was in the middle of the night or whatever. Anytime I got, I stood up and, you know, she's holding me to go walk to, you know, to the bathroom or whatever. I literally got lightheaded. She was like, you getting lightheaded? I'm like, yes. She'll spray, like, alcohol on my chest or whatever, spray it on my hands. My hands and my arms and my legs were tingling really bad. They were tingling really bad for like two days though. I don't know why. But she would always spray my hands and my arms. The lady at the recovery house, um, my feet and my legs with this little spray bottle she had with alcohol in it. I guess it helps with not being nauseous or whatever. Also, I had nauseous pills, a prescription that I got from the doctor that I did take that helped also. So, but you just got to make sure you stay hydrated. You have to make sure you drink plenty, plenty of pineapple juice and plenty, plenty of water. I know that you don't like it. So a lot of people don't even drink water. But if you plan on getting surgery, you have to drink water and you have to drink pineapple juice. Like it helps with the recovery. The pineapple juice has plenty of vitamin C in it that you absolutely need. And you just need to drink it. Like whether you like it or not. not I mean, if you allergic to it and that's something different you might need to consult with your physician or whatever on something i don't know something else that you can use maybe a different alternative but other than that if you just don't like it i mean you're gonna have to suck it up and drink it because it, it helps you need it like you have to drink the pineapple juice and you have to drink gatorade and water stuff like that no soda because it's just not good for you the acid how long did you stay in your stage one faha I stayed in my stage one Faha for three weeks. I stayed in it for three weeks because I didn't know no better. Um, I but other than that, I would have I would have actually bought my stage two Faha on my second week, but I, I just didn't know any better. So how long did you wear lipophones? I didn't start wearing lipophones until maybe like 12 or 13 days after being back in Miami. I actually didn't wear any lipophones. I didn't wear anything to compress me at all. I, I didn't even wear anything under my garment for two weeks after I got back home. Cause like I said, I thought my surgery body was my body. I didn't know I needed to compress and be as tight as possible. And I, I did, did not know. I just literally did not know. I just, I, I didn't even I didn't start wearing lipo foams until maybe about two weeks ago. Did you get fat taken from your thighs? No, I did not get any fat taken from my thighs. I wanted fat taken from my arms actually, but he said that that's an extra thousand. I didn't know that when I when they said you get fifteen areas a lipo, I thought you choose what areas you wanted. I didn't know it was an extra thousand to get your arms like old or your inner thighs. So, no, I did not get that. How bad was the pain? What was your prescription? Um, the pain was like, I don't really know how to describe the pain. The pain was very, it was bearable. I'm not going to lie. It was bearable, but it's like... If you ever worked out to the extreme and you get so sore to where you feel like you can't move or you start a new job and your body's so sore, times that by 10. That's the pain. It literally feels like you did a thousand crunches 
and you just can't move because you're you're in so much pain. That's it. It hurts that bad. Um, but I mostly took Tylenol. I only took like um hydrocodone because my dog. First of all, he did not prescribe me any. Percocet, I don't know why I've heard that what well, he said that a lot of people are getting Addicted to Percocet. So I don't know. I don't take Percocet. I've never taken Percocet before But he didn't prescribe me Percocet. He gave me hydrocodone and they worked like a charm When I got serious serious pain, I would pop one but normally I would just take like um Tylenol extra strength or Tylenol arthritis something like that and it hurt it worked just just as fine um but when i was about to get a massage i knew i was about to get a massage i will take a hydrocodone maybe like 30 minutes before the massage because the massage sucks it hurts so bad like that's the worst pain in the world the massage oh my god that's the only thing that scares me about going back for round two or getting any type of other lipo work done it's because of the massages that's the only thing i don't want to go through again is the massages they hurt so bad oh my god just the thought of them oh my god it hurts so bad oh so just keep in mind pop your pain pill and i ain't talking about no tylenol pop your percocet or hydrocodone or whatever strong type of you know what i'm saying whatever pain pill serious pain pill you got pop it like 20 30 minutes before you about to get a massage because baby them massages is not no joke it's like while they massaging and pressing down and draining on you it's like they're they're pushing and draining down to the holes and when they get to the hole they kind of like pinch to really squeeze all the extra blood and fluid out like it hurts so oh my god i can't even describe what it feels like it hurts so bad here. But I just want to say, make sure that you guys are massaging yourself in between massages because the massages are, are worth it. You have to massage yourself and the massages are like, <clears throat> they're very expensive. Like in Miami, the massage, I was paying $75 for massage, which was cheap because I ain't gonna say cheap, but the cheapest that I've, I've heard of. Most massages in in Miami, I've heard, was like $95 or $100 a massage. But at the recovery house that I was at, they were $75 per massage. But make sure that you guys are massaging yourself in between massages. Something no one told me. That's why I was hard as a fucking rock. When I tell you my stomach, my stomach was like this. I know it's hard to explain. I'm not being extra and I'm not being dramatic. My stomach, that's how hard my stomach was. So, like, when you don't have the money to get your massages or if your massage lady is booked or whatever and you just waiting for your next appointment to come up, you got a massage an appointment on Wednesday and today is Sunday. Massage yourself every day. Go down, you know, over and over. Massage down. How do you feel? Feel good. <laughs> now that I've gotten myself together and I got some knowledge about this whole BBL Lipo 360 thing, I know how to take care of myself and get my body to where it needs to be and hoping and praying for the best results. I'm praying for the best final results in the next four to five months so i feel good my stomach is still sore oh my god like when i take all this stuff off i'll be like this and i have to get like a dry brush also i recommend getting a dry brush and i kind of like just going across my stomach real slow just like loosen up the nerve and my skin and my back before I start massaging myself and oh my god it helps with the itch and it feels so good I just use this and kind of like 
really just scratch and oh my god it feels so good so yeah if you saw in other videos most girls highly recommend that's why i like this because i wash with this end and i use this end to like scratch myself and like really loosen up my skin and get ready for me to like really massage it and stuff next question have you sat down on your butt and does it hurt um i have not sat down just flat sat down on my booty no i have not just sat down on it no um i do drive with my bbl pillow and this really nice back pillow that i ordered from amazon amazon is my best friend i love amazon amazon got her thing <laughs> so um but yeah i do sit on my bbl pillow I, i'm scared to sit on my butt i don't know when i'm gonna do it probably like maybe my eighth week Maybe like around the third month or something. I don't know when I'm going to do it, but I'm just scared to sit on it. I haven't done it yet, though, so. What are your measurements? I don't know. I didn't know my measurements <laughs> before surgery, and I don't know my measurements now. I'm not a person that keep up with measurements. I've never measured myself. I didn't really care. I just want the look. I want to look good. I want the hourglass shape, which I have, and I'm trying to maintain it and get it more flat and shapier but i don't know my measurements i never know my measurements i don't keep up with it i never have kept up with it so what is a faha and why do you have to wear it so the faha is one of the most important things that you're going to need straight out of surgery that's why normally a faha is included in your surgery um in your surgery price which and my surgery price, which was $4,500, what came with that was three massages, a faha, and three lipofoams. That's what came in my $4,500 package deal. The faha shapes your body. It shapes your body because you just had a major procedure. So from having liposuction and your body getting all out of whack and torn and ripped, your blood cells and all of that, your body got your stomach needs to figure out how to what it needs to do next that's the point of the faha to put it on and sculpt your figure sculpt it and give it its guidance to where it needs to be how your stomach needs to be back to where it, it needs to be because it's not going to be the way it was before you went into surgery that's the point of the faha to give it that sculpt and balance everything out and you know get your butt to where it needs to be also you have a new booty a new derriere you have more fat there more weight there so that's the point of the bottom part of the faha it's stretchy you know it stretches out for your cheeks because the butt is swollen it's really really big so that's why it's not as tight like the butt part is not as tight as the stomach part which is more of like a girdle part like the back and the stomach part is more of like a girdle part instead of like the buns and the straps and everything it's not because that's where most of the work was done so you have to wear the faha i love wearing the faha it, it gives me hope that if i continue to do what i've been doing i'm going to be looking like this in five months four to five months permanently thank god and i can't wait because i'm tired of wearing all this stuff oh. so yeah and faha is very very important make sure you guys get you one where have you at least two fahas i don't know if you know this or not you're gonna get a faha one straight out of surgery you need to have at least another one another faha one because that one's gonna be all bloody and messy we're well, gonna have to wash it so you're going to need one to put on while that one's washing. Same thing with Faha 2. Once you go down, maybe two, three weeks later, you're going to get into Faha 2. You're going to need at least two of them. So when one is dirty, the other one can be washing. Vice versa, when you have it off for at least an hour, because you're going to need to compress for at least 23 hours. So while you're not compressing and while you are compressing, you have one washing, but you have one on. Always have at least two fahas. Always. And like with your stage one, if you don't have the money 
to like get you a stage two right away you can always go to like your local um measurement store or like your dry cleaning store get your get size or whatever and they can take it in there's different options to get by. You don't have to always just spend, spend money. You can go and get your stage one taken in, get measured. Like there's ways around this. I hope that you guys love this video. If you guys love this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for all of the love that you have been showing me on my BBL Lipo 360 journey. I really, really appreciate it. I hope that it was helpful. I hope that I answered all of your questions. If I forgot <laughs> to answer anything. Make sure you guys drop it down in the comments below and I will make sure to answer you guys as soon as I get a chance. And until next time, bye.